Okay, first podcast sitting here with Megan Cabot of Planet Hair. That's right. Okay, what else you got going on? I know you got a lot of other stuff going on. Let's give you a let's give you a, mm. a plug before we even get started. Well, let's see. I own Planet Hair, Dirty Sexy Riot, Dirty Sexy Riot. Um, I just recently took on a brand ambassador. I'm helping Shinerbach with their promotion teams. Hey, that's in the um, fridge right now too. Is it nice? Ooh, they're coming out with their s'mores beer. I haven't tried that one, but I heard it's awesome. I just drank the rest of my Shiner Cheer. I was a little sad about that. Yeah. Um, what else do I got going on? Oh, I just started an online clothing company. Yeah. Because I was tired of... What ever- is it? It's called Closet Lush Apparel. So it's like lingerie. No, oh, it's okay. totally not. It's like um, like rocker shit. Oh, cool. Like, like torn up stuff? Yeah, like I try to order stuff like that or like shirts that say stupid shit like I'm with the band or, you know, whatever. Just dumb stuff. But like stuff that like I would wear. Yeah, Like going out. Because I get invited to all these clothing groups and they're like, wear this floral printed top. And I'm like... You don't want to sell anything or be involved in anything that you're really not involved in. That I don't like or believe in. I won't touch it. Absolutely. It's trash. And it's fake and then nobody believes it. Because everyone's like, like, she doesn't wear that. You don't, yeah. I was, yeah, like... Like, I don't know. Like, Black is my favorite color. <laughs> it's pretty basic, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> wearing all black right now. All black, Metallica. <laughs> That's it. Pretty metal. Yeah. <clears throat> so how long have you lived here in the Black Hills? 20 years. Oh, where are you from? Uh, Pierre, South Dakota. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Right over the river. On the river. On the river. Yeah. On the river. On. The- yeah. <laughs> I did not live in a van. Yeah. Down by the river. You like wrapped a lot more, right? Oh, yes. Like, I actually was just back in Pier this last weekend, and you could not pay me enough. No offense. It's just not for me. Yeah, it's not for some people. No. Yeah. Especially the opportunities out here are growing more and more. And <clears throat> that's why I've started Wednesday, uh, Woman Wednesday, basically. I'm going to have a woman on who's inspirational from Black Hills area. So... Very cool. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. cool. I thought it was kind of cool that you actually hit me up because I actually had you in mind too, and I was scheduling stuff. And then you're like, "Hey, I, be I on would your love to do that." Yeah, yeah. You, you said it exactly like that too. You were like, "Hey, I want to be on your podcast. Let me do it." <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just work my way into shit that I want to do. That's just what like, you have to do, man. Yeah, you have to be. Some of us are so. I, I'm a crappy like if I'm not uh, creative. Like mm-hmm. at my job or stuff like that, I go nuts mm-hmm. and I can't do it. And there's some people like that. Some people say we're lazy or we're, we're, we're shitty employees or something like that. But if we can't be creative, we will not See, like our job. But that's we'll why people nuts. that's why people like us have to just do our own shit. Yeah. We just have to do our you know own our own companies or do our own things because we're not in fact shitty employees. No, oh. we work our ass off, but it has to be something that we're you know you have to be passionate about it or you're gonna be like yeah whatever. That's why I got into cosmetology too. My mm-hmm. my license is hanging on the wall. Oh, perfect! Yeah. <laughs> so just in case, just in case, know, slice and dice somebody if I, up. <laughs> if I end up with a booth open. <laughs> yeah, we actually went to the same college too. I mm. went to uh, Black Hills Beauty College here. Yeah, I. It's like embarrassing to say that this fall I started cosmetology school sixteen years ago. Like this September will be 16 years since I started cosmetology school. 10 years ago for me. God, like when did we get old? 2010 is when I graduated. So I graduated in 05. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. Well, it's 2020. So yeah, 10 years. 16 years. Mm -hmm. Damn, man. Where where was the first place you worked at? Salon One on Jackson. Oh yeah, Jackson. Isn't that like an old lady place? No, it's not. (laughs) So it like when I started there, it was so trendy. It was like one of the trendiest salons to be at. And they just keep their employees for a super, super long time. Yeah. And so their clientele grows older with them. Yeah. But I started at uh, Cost Cutters. Oh, yeah. uh, On the north side by Kmart. So any of you have been to uh, the Rapid City area here in the Black Hills, uh, the north side has a <laughs> reputation <laughs> we don't want to really talk about. But it no. does have a reputation of having a little more crime than any side. 
So yes, and slowly creeping in is now the south side. I'm hearing. Yes, it so. is. And I, when I was cutting hair there, uh, it was tough. Like brand new, dealing with issues. Uh, of violence and stuff mm -hmm. while cutting hair. I had to be the security guard for the girls and to cut hair. And I was like, man, I'm, like, I'm getting I'm, paid the same like, amount as you guys. And I am underqualified for half of this. Like, oh, jeez, I hate insane. doing. I hate doing clipper cuts, though. Honestly, I don't what? know. Yeah, You're like a dude. <clears throat> like, <laughs> I went to cosmetology school thinking I wanted to do barbering, and I just wanted to to do dudes hair because that's all I did. And then I started doing women's hair. You get to shape. You it's get to more creative. It, it is like, and girls sit there for twenty minutes in a mirror and figure and flip their hair every way and just. I mean, they're like, Do, okay, like some I of love the most, it. Some of, well, and sometimes that can come from like the most painful of consultations where they like don't know what they want. <laughs> oh yeah, that's but worse. they know what they want. But like what they're saying versus the pictures they're showing you aren't matching up, and yeah. you have to like dissect it and figure out what it is they actually fucking want <laughs> sorry i swear a lot <laughs> that's totally illegal here it's a, this isn't it's radio. free will for any woman oh. to do what she wants on the podcast and on occasion i do radio forgot about that too <laughs> what station uh my latest endeavor was uh x rock i uh sat in on morningwood uh in for kevin while kevin he was Morgan. out with his yep while he was out with uh getting his brain right cool man is what i've been saying yeah yeah, and then if he's out of town or whatever, sometimes a fireball will reach out to me and say, hey, are you available? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I used to work for uh, Doom Broadcasting back in the day. I used to do Q92.3, and I used to help out on X-Rock uh, with Buckner back in the day. Oh, man. Yep. Buckner. That's crazy. Yeah, I was right across the hall, and he'd be like, hey, man. He's like, let's... Let's get creative. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Like, Perfect. Stop by. Yeah, yeah, it was. I actually started radio over at uh, Howgo. I did uh, Case Guy and Kick. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Was... Weekend tracking. Mm -hmm. I had a, I had a few shifts there, and um, everybody over there is super awesome. Actually, like, it just tracking is just not for me. Like, if I'm gonna do radio, it has to be. I got to do live. <laughs> like you know, like I got like have somebody to interact with and like. Most of it's post. Most of it's post. Like yeah. You it's pre, just... eh, like record, and then you just throw it out there later on. And and that's what really sucked for me is because I couldn't have guests on to talk oh. to. Uh, they really get stipulant. Like the music is already it's, shuffled for yep. you. You just do the ads and then... It's pre-tracked and yeah. things. Yep. And then you have to get approved to have like a guest on. I mean, it's like you're not responsible enough to talk about something interesting. Right. Especially in here, you know, in our community. It's like... Well, and how many times can you be like... Docking, you know, coming up next, we've got Dio. Stay tuned on 95.1 Case Guy. And it's like, how many times can you transition song to song? And then you have five talking points for ads in between. Yep. And in a four to five hour break, it's like, oh my God, but I could track I know, three to four shifts in 45 minutes. Yeah. I would just zip through that. And the production directors always tell you, uh, just be creative about it. It's like, dude. You gave me literal talking points. Yeah, and these are what they want you to stay, and then how are you supposed to fit something in? And they'll be like, okay, we're done. Bye. See, and the best is like doing a live radio show. Like uh, like Zach and I banter well together. He's easy guy to talk to. Yeah, and he was, getting, he was getting upset because he's like, everyone thinks you're funnier than me. <laughs> <You're jealous. laughs> we had him on uh, the podcast on episode 12. The Black Hills podcast. He's a riot, dude. That was that was right before I got this studio. Yeah, man, it was tough doing podcasts everywhere, setting up, trying to get quality, and doing sound. video. Yeah, I was. Yeah. It was tough, man. It was it was a pain in the ass. I'm so happy that I got this place. Yeah, it looks great, by the way. Thank it's, you. It's cozy. Thank you. I did it myself. It looks so I nice. Did it all myself. Good job. <clears throat> it was a pain in the ass, but I'm are Mexican. those makeup sponges? Yes, they are. They're makeup Holy wedges. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Well, I thought that, like I was looking at them. I thought they were like plastic, and I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's so funny too because I didn't think anybody would notice what they were. Nobody would notice. I went to. I was like, mm, thank you, Ulta, for some soundproofing. And also, <laughs> you have a cosmetologist sitting here at your podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think anybody would really notice that. Though maybe if I got a cosmetologist on here, but I was just like. 
none of the dudes will know. <laughs> like it came with the kit, man. <laughs> yeah, you just put them in between. It's just it's just an added yeah. touch. I got a little creative when I was doing this. I was like, okay. well, you have to. Yeah, you do, and especially on a budget. I was balling on a budget. Yeah, just did everything hey man, myself. Champagne taste on a beer budget, right? That's mm-hmm. like story of my life. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, oh, you have such great taste. I'm like, thanks. I got that at the dollar store. <sighs> yeah, you, being thrifty is like actually. Thrifty is it's, nifty. It's fun being creative like that with <laughs> yeah. stuff too. It's funner than than going paying like a bunch of money for something that the person next to you exactly has. Oh my god! Yeah, or I like, like I like being an individual, and it is or finding the same thing at like a department store for like sixty bucks, and then yeah. finding the same thing somewhere else for like nine. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with if it's something as simple as like soundproofing like you've done with makeup sponges i'm gonna go with nine (laughs) dollars you know what i mean for sure because it's a sponge sponge. (laughs) it's a it's a fucking sponge it's not like it's a car you uh actually the soundproofing stuff was really out of control expensive it gets way up there yeah and i was like dude you know what you should have just done gone and bought mattress those egg crate mattress things i was gonna but i wanted to make it look somewhat you just paint it black decent like i've never had anything in my life look this decent before so oh, it I was looks like, great yeah so i was like i gotta do it that's awesome <laughs> <clears throat> are those makeup sponges sorry to call you out <laughs> <laughs> just so you all know You're like thanks a lot megan it's got a female's touch from a man <laughs> hey you went to cosmetology school that's your niche <laughs> yeah it's, that's true yeah no it looks great and now i just can't stop looking at them <laughs> so uh uh, actually, today is January 15th. Mm-hmm. Damn. And, well, we'll put this out the 22nd, actually. Let's oh. do that. All right. Yeah, let's do it sooner. Let's do it. Uh, but on the 19th, you have, um... Dirty Sex Riot tryouts. Yes, coming auditions up. coming up. What does that entail, even? Well, you know, every audition that we do is a little bit different because we learn, like, okay, well, this didn't work so much, or we didn't, um, this girl wasn't able to showcase her forte. And so the way we're going to do it this time is we had, you know, bonus points for sending a resume like if you have experience and Uh, like and like photos so we know what kind of what to expect and um you do have to fit a profile you do and it's kind of nice that it's a woman being like that not a dude then we you know get sued and be like you're a scumbag well but here's the thing is like you have to tread so lightly with all that even as a woman because um women don't want to feel judged they want to feel um empowered and so there has to be everybody does. Yes, but there's a. <sighs> I think women are more sensitive to it. I, I guess I'm yeah. not. Like I actually think a lot more like a dude. Like you got, you got a lot of testosterone going. I on. I don't know, but <laughs> like I'm not like I don't get emotional about stuff. I don't like I'm just like just shut up and do it. Like <laughs> I just like you don't have time to sit and cry in a corner. You know. Yeah, absolutely. But um, not all women are like that. I'm finding out. Uh, owning a dance group is that I can say something and be like, the fuck are you thinking? And then yeah. they're like, God, what's her problem? Mm. She hurt my feelings. Yeah. yeah. Instead of being like, you know what? You're right. I totally fucked up. But then I have to go back and be like, listen, you're, I shouldn't have flown off the handle like that. But This is uh, probably what I'm going to tell when I, when I talk to a lot of the, the women that come on this on Wednesdays is uh, uh, criticism. Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of them don't take good criticism and a lot of them like to act like they can take it, but they really can't take criticism. They just get so offended, especially a cosmetologist. You tell them oh. one thing and they are like, ah, I'm fucking right. And I do this. Well, I'm perfect. And it's like, and to be honest, the, the stylist at my salon, now we do have a guy working for us and he is, we just treat him like one of the girls, like poor guy. Is he gay? No, he's not. He's See, married. He's I got, got a wife. I got treated like I was gay. And I was like, I don't mind. I'm You're like, like, I don't want to hear about tampons. Don't tell me of this. Oh, you know, man, like that's the worst. <laughs> yeah. All the girls sink up and you're just screwed. Yeah. And you're like, God, I hope I'm not on bathroom duty. Hope I don't have to change that garbage. Yuck. 
Ninety percent of them flush them anyway. So that is and so. You're not even supposed no, to. <laughs> that's how you fuck up plumbing. Like, yeah, what? it is. Yeah. Anyway, not, probably not a great topic to talk about. <laughs> but it's, it's real though. It's Tampon Wednesday yeah. here that's, at Black Hills Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the niche. Niche, what, niche niche of niche of niche. Black Hills podcast is like genuine conversation. Yeah, I don't want to be so scripted. Yeah, I, well, I don't like um, some of the some of the people around here that are starting podcasts and stuff. A lot of them have a formula for the podcast. Like you have to educate and so make sure everything. Tell me about is, this. Yeah, and, and but, what does that mean to you? But then they want to be politically correct about everything and say no and study up on stuff. I'm no. like, what happened to somebody else? Uh, telling you their viewpoints and then having a real conversation rather than filling their head up and just making That's you right. not real journalism. I don't think it's... I mean, just... this technically isn't... I mean, it's a form of journal- journalism, but I, this is... I would so much rather have it be like laid back and, down and be able to bullshit and cuss on air and do whatever. vomit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but, but back to um, my experience with people taking criticism... My stylists are all really great about it. If I'm like, hey, could you, you know, adjust this or do, they're like, yep, totally. Thanks for bringing it up. Now, with the dance group, everybody is like, like when you're physically working for three to five hours a day, like, because yeah. we do, we rehearse on Sundays for generally at least three hours. Um, when when we do that and everyone starts to get frustrated if they're not getting choreography and I'm like, what are you doing with your hand? Don't do that. And then they're like, ugh. And they just get, you know, frustrated. But it is what it is. And um, overall, as a group, we look to, you know, empower one another. And there is something to be said, especially as an adult female, about having female friendships that, like, I never really thought were that important until I got older. Like, I've always kind of been one of the dudes. Like, always hung out. Like, I wear makeup, but I get along better with dudes, which is so cliche to say. But it's been true until my 30s now, and I'm like, I need those female friendships. Yeah. Uh, women, I have. It's not because, like, I'm a hairstylist, and I grew up with nothing but women, and I'm the youngest of three, you know, or four children, and I have nothing but three sisters. <laughs> it's not, it has nothing to do with that. Right. Women women can play, actually, harder than some guys. Mm-hmm. And... And you like some girls are like, no man, guys are way cooler. You have no idea until you become friends with some hard ass girls because they can take some serious shit. Guys are cooler if you're looking for a surface friendship, for just like someone to just like shoot the shit with and like yeah. not have to worry about drama or anything too emotionally in depth. Hang out with dudes all day long. I don't know, man. These days it's kind of changed a little bit. There's yeah, so many dudes that have a lot of drama rather than girls nowadays. I guess that's probably. I mean, that's probably becoming more true. Women, but like, women like to watch it and then, talk about it, and then dudes just like to say shit behind people's backs now. So it's kind of like really? it's kind of flipping the page. Oh man, see, and like my friends, we're all like, "Dude, did you see?" <laughs> and then we'll be like, "I don't want to be involved, but did you hear?" Yeah, <laughs> like that's how usually how we talk about shit. I mean, you know, even for Rapid City being, uh, you know, growing as much as it is, it's still everybody knows everybody yeah. that knows that thinks they know something about you. Like I've heard all kinds of rumors about myself that I was like I wasn't even there. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope whatever I did was awesome because I wasn't there. You do one thing, mm-hmm. and it is a mark on your reputation until you die. Okay, well, try being a metal burlesque dancer. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, absolutely. then and it's like I travel and dance in my underwear, and people are always like, oh. I bet she has so many road dudes. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Collecting STDs like Pokemon cards? Yeah, what? Like, what? <laughs> no. It's just, I'm just like... You're married, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Jared. Yep. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Yeah, it's uh, it's just interesting. And it's funny because every once in a while, we'll hear something pop up and we'll bullshit about it at home. And I'll be like, hey, did you hear what I'm doing now? And he's like, oh, news to me. There's... Yeah, some relationships, though, some people shouldn't be together because they have no trust. And trust is a real thing. It's like, nah, man. If you have a guilty conscience, you have a guilty conscience. I will say it's really hard for some of my dancers that are married, like some of their husbands, you know, like... Jealousy. No, it's not... It's it's more like they have a hard time 
watching other men stare at their yes stare at jealous. their wives it's more like it's a territorial thing it is absolutely like, like that's, it, it goes back yeah. to like caveman shit like that's his that's real mine. man yeah it is and yeah. i mean yeah i'm the same way like yeah but like and so so from a female's perspective we're not gonna go out and bang the dudes that are looking at us like yeah i want to touch your butt because half of them just because a guy thinks you're cute or something right like that. yeah. that's a not, lot of guys like, need to understand that in our mind our men should be like fuck yeah that's my wife Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, be proud. Like, we're not out there doing shit we're not supposed to be doing. We're out there entertaining. It's entertainment. It is. And it's no different than an actress in a movie playing a character. Once they leave that set, they're back to being themselves. And that's what I have to explain to people. On stage, we're an alter ego and a character. Off stage, you're going to find me sitting in a corner drinking by myself. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be, you know fan kicking and hair whipping on somebody's table at the bar like yeah. i'm not gonna do that <laughs> it's there's there is a fine line between being a a jealous guy and then a territorial guy mm-hmm. and same with women like but one thing guys do need to understand about women is if she's made up her mind that she loves you and she's gonna stick beside you that woman is gonna stay there Unless you fuck it up. <clears throat> if you do something, <laughs> if you do something and, and like you're in a rough patch that she's decided that she's done, mm-hmm. she's done. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, you know, you can be like, oh, I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Once they have made their mind, it is like they are, they are stronger than men I agree. Satan walking away. I will agree with that. However, I will touch on something that often gets overlooked by men. Mm-hmm. Is that when once she decides she's done and that's it, there have been warning signs for months or even possibly years of them being like, hey, you're kind of fucking up or I don't <laughs> think that's attractive or hey, I need this from you and I'm not getting it from you. Yeah. There are warning signs. Yeah. And guys don't see that. And women are like, the fuck do you mean? I've told you a million times. But then once a woman decides she's done, it's... Yeah, it's done. Cut off. Uh, yeah. You you know, as a man, you just probably overlooked all the warning signs, or or guys will hear it and they'll go, "You're right. I need to do better." Or yeah, or, or I didn't do that. You know, like it's either <laughs> yeah. one way or the other. But it's me, man. I didn't do that. Come on, man. But actions. <laughs> I always tell my guy friends this that are like, "Oh, I'm really struggling in my relationship." I'm like, actions. Yeah, speak so you, much louder than you got to execute right away because there is no like, I'll work on it. And I mean, you know, a lot of them just bury it and then yeah. just continue and they're like, to go. They'll say, well, I'm, that's not my personality to be, to do nice things. If it isn't, you should just walk away. Exactly. Like, that's not the person you should be with. And then don't drag it on. I mean, yeah, you live like, it's like YOLO bitches. You only yeah. live once. I yep. mean, you got to go. You got to leave her alone and let her do her thing. And then just be a man about it. Just break your own heart rather than have it broken for you. Yeah. It's, it's yep. a lot easier to like move on. Less depression, being a man, <laughs> grab your balls and be like, yeah, I'm out. Yeah, this is like, this has turned into love therapy hour with Dr. Megan. <laughs> We're going all over the place. There oh, yeah, is, we totally are. I don't There's have no No subject that is going to be untouched. Here. <laughs> We're going to talk about everything and anything. How long you got? I got not all day, but. <laughs> nah, we got an hour. We're good. Yeah, no, uh, there's, it's just, it's been super interesting. Um living the last 20 years in this town watching it explode and all the opportunities that yeah. all of a sudden are being presented and and i will say it is not about what you know it is definitely who you know yeah well here in the midwest absolutely absolutely yep so. okay well real quick we're gonna take a break give us a sec we'll be right back like this podcast is so fresh we don't have any sponsors yet and if you'd like to place your ad this is where it's gonna go like this podcast is a new source of media to get to know more about the people their stories and ideas this is a beautiful area and it's exploding with ambitious and creative people we want to hear everything black hills entrepreneurs leaders charities businesses artists musicians hairstylists restaurants sports motorcyclists, automotive, pets, athletes, hunters, fishers, firefighters, police officers, healthcare community, the religious and political community, men and women, the LGBT community, everything. This is 
where we come to share stories, ideas, and have conversations about anything and everything Black Hills. Keep it local, keep it Black Hills. Welcome back, round two. Here we go. So, uh, your dancer name from, uh, actually I was going to ask this already. Oh. So, yeah, from Dirty Sexy Riot, where did the name Eva Steele come from? Oh my God. This is like kind of an embarrassing story. Um, so oh, yeah, I had, let's get the dirt. I had, oh, I love it. Okay. Um, I had left a previous relationship, professional group. Yes, it was a relationship. And um, I had a stage name with them. Well, then I was asked to MC at Glencoe for the 75th during Sturgis. And it was just happened to be like an opportunity that fell in my lap. And I was like, yeah, but I don't want to be Megan. That's like a kindergarten teacher's name. You know, like, <laughs> thanks, mom. So I was like, what can I, you know, I got to come up with something. Well, I was talking to one of my girlfriends, Starla, and I was like, I need something that sounds kind of hot, but like powerful. And she's like, okay. And then she was joking about the um, Fifty Shades of Grey character, Anna Steele. And I was like, that is the dumbest thing. You cannot be, I cannot be Anna Steele. That's already a character that's like, and she's like, Eva. Generic. She's like, Eva Steele. And I was like. I bet you she got that from uh, Wally. Wally? Eva. Oh my God. I have never <laughs> seen that movie. What is wrong with you? Get Disney Plus, man. I, I have it. We've been it's watching that like Aww. every night. But Eva Steele came from that, huh? Eva, that's how Eva Steele came to be. And um, it's kind of starting to terrify me how we're like morphing into one <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> like, boom, boom, boom. yeah no uh um yeah so for those of you listening that don't know that yeah. my real name is megan yeah and they only know me as eva mm -hmm. surprise <laughs> she's a real person <laughs> yeah so how did you come up with the name dirty sexy riot okay so one of the managers at iron horse saloon that i work at um I'm a production manager there, and one of the managers there swears up and down that he came up with it. Mm -hmm. I would, like, I will fight him on this probably until we <laughs> die. His name's Lolo, and he was like, I came up with it. And I'm like, I don't think you did. But Was he, he like, it's dirty and it's sexy? And well, I was like, I was like, well, I remember being like, all right, because that's kind of like what went through my mind. I want something kind of dirty, and I want something sexy, and... um. It had like I was like on like a power trip when I was trying to come up with this name, and I really backed myself into a corner with it because <laughs> a lot of venues are terrified to hire us because of our name. They're like, ooh, because we don't fit every demo. If you think about it, like, yeah. like uh, we had to jump through hoops to get an all ages show with Hairball. Oh wow! Yeah, so we work with Hairball frequently during Sturgis, and um, yeah, it's kind of a. It's, it's kind great. of a good collaboration. It's perfect. Yeah, and like during but... Sturgis, it's great. But then off Which, season when it's... Eight-year-olds are looking at porn anyway. So it's like, whatever, dude. I like, hope not. They have grown up completely different children now. Like when I was young, I never even saw a booby till I was like 15. I didn't even... I didn't... Yeah. I didn't know what a lot of things... Internet, man. Internet. People need to take those parental controls seriously, man. They do. That's yeah. crazy. There's a lot of scary shit out there. Um, yep. Yeah, no. Uh, so, but I'm glad that my friends talked to me off a ledge while I was naming it. What was one of the crappy names that you were thinking Okay, so <laughs> I didn't know that there was already a band called this, but I was like, female empowerment. We're going to call it Pussy Riot. Oh, yeah, that's a band. Yeah, that's a band. I didn't even realize that. And then they were like, that's already a band, Sugar. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. And they're like, and really, you want a group name with the word pussy in uh, it? That would have been hard to... Harder to book us. Yes. I was like, no. I just was like, you know, you sit up at night and have cocktails and... Come up with the dumbest names possible. Stupidest. Shot number 10. Here we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. There's a couple... Dance. There's one dance group name out there that I am like, God damn, that's badass. What is it? Little Miss Nasty. Is, and, well, that would be cool if it was solo, like one person, but Little Miss Nasty, that's like... It's it's a group of women. It's, yeah. it's Sounds like one person. They're out of LA, and they have a residency in Vegas now, and I actually met them because they toured within this moment. 
And I saw them and I had, had taken some years off of dancing and I looked at my boss at Iron Horse and I said, I feel like the, the power of female presence is being very underestimated Yeah, like at, at this venue. And I think we need to do something. And I was like, book little miss nasty book this other group. And he was like, hell no. Am I spending, you know, over $10,000 for yeah. a dance group? And he's like, art, that's not like our focus is on the bands, which I understand that. And so I said, well, let me come up with mine. Let me do my own. And he was like, well, give me five minutes. And he came back and he was just hanging up the phone and he goes, you got the green light girl. And I was like, oh, put you on the spot. And then you have oh, to come up with shit. it. Did you even have dancers? No, I had one. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Choreography, I, dancing. In seven months, costumes. seven months, I auditioned the girls, did all the choreography, um, got the costumes, got the merch, and we were up and rolling by ra Rally was our first gig as a group. Do you, do you, uh, did you have financial backing or did you do it no, yourself? All out of pocket. Oh yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. That's that's what it's about, man. That first year, um, I dumped six grand into the dance group. Some people think it's not a lot of money. That, but when it's out of your own pocket And you're still trying to live your life and, and you have a and family. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh it's my tough, god. Man. It is very tough. And that was in seven months. I dumped six grand. So that's almost a thousand dollars a month I was dumping into this. So I hope some uh I hope some people out there are getting inspired by just taking a chance. I just got to do it because, I mean, if you didn't do that, dude, that, that guarantee, hands down, that's a hell of an experience to stand on that stage in front of all them people. Oh, and my just, God. Just get down. That's crazy. Biggest, the That'd be biggest, scary. craziest crowd. One of the biggest, craziest crowds we've ever danced in front of a Iron Horse had Nelly. And oh, we yeah. were like. Last year. Yeah. yeah. And, and we were like, well, it was two years ago. Two years last year, they had uh, Naughty by Nature. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so they all kind of blend together. They do. Me. It totally does. <laughs> I know. But Nelly, um, we were not expecting the occupancy that night, mm -hmm. and we were our venue was bursting at the seams. Now, mind you, I also I have a dance group that's performing there, but I'm also a production manager, so I'm dealing with advancements and riders and tour managers and like i do that all day long and then have to go get on stage and i'm listening to um our our employees talk about holy shit did you hear that we're almost sold out of chrome club or vip and beyond that our um concerts are free and i remember during the last song of our set right before nelly went on there, it's just a sea of people. Oh yeah! And we had this dance to Roland by Limp Biscuit, and it was our most hated dance of all time. <laughs> I I pulled that dance. I was like, "This is stupid." Yeah. So we pulled it, but in the last time we performed it was I think there, and that music started, and the crowd went fucking crazy, and it was like a sea of people just jumping. And it's fucked. I was like, I looked over at one of my dancers and was like, holy fuck. It's dude. about that music era. Yeah. Yeah. Because Nelly and Lamb Biscuit was kind of the same era. So, yeah. Oh, for absolutely. sure. Yep. For sure. Yeah. And we like, we try to focus and be a little more metal, but I was like, got to be a little, it was a crowd. Punk rock and hip hop yeah. a little here and there. It yep. was a crowd favorite. And I just was like, I don't get it. For those two that are listening that have no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> they dance usually. At Sturgis Rally here yes. in South Dakota, it's one of the biggest bike rallies, and there's it, bike rallies all over the United States. It is the biggest bike rally in yeah. the nation. This, yeah, it's and it's this year being gnarly. the 80th, there's going to be it's going to be insane. Oh my god, it's going to be dangerous, mm -hmm. and it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. I can't, <laughs> dude. I like look forward to that. Those you know those loud pipes and that dirty ass rock and roll like playing through the hills. Like, oh, it's my favorite. I live for it. I live. I will plan my life around rally. Yeah, I, a lot of people do around here. A lot of people try. So I mean, it's what a moneymaker. What is it? Uh, January. When is this coming out? I already forgot. It's coming in January twenty second. Yeah. So, if you haven't booked anywhere to stay or gotten your request for vacation for that week, you should probably do it now. Um, and also, <laughs> if you're looking for a place to book, I highly recommend Steel Pony Campground. It's the old uh, throttle location. Oh, 
They just put in, um, last year they put in swimming pools, there's cabins, there's full RV hookups, there's bars out there, entertainment. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah we were going to actually try and stay out there in Sturgis to uh, party up for the 80th. Oh, yeah. But. Oh, yeah. It's like, expensive. It's... Oh, for sure. I know that they've got, like, I think Steel Pony does, like, early bird specials where it's cheaper if you book it, like, now. Yeah, it's getting more and more expensive throughout the years. Well, if you think it, about it. It's insane. You could buy it for the early bird now, and yeah. then if you end up deciding not to go, turn around and sell it for more. You make money on it. We ordered shots last year, and they were, they were like, Vicks. <laughs> Nyquil shots, and they were small. And were they like eight bucks a piece? Yeah, or something they were stupid? like they were like nine. And I was like, "Dude, no." Put it on my card, and we're gonna go downtown and buy a bottle now. And walk around. Yep, <laughs> it's it's not responsible, but I mean, if you're gonna drink responsible, pay responsible. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> well, and it's crazy. Well, and you know, here's the thing: is that like I know a lot of places like they really jack their prices up for the rally. They big time, big big time. Yep. You know, it's funny though because I guess working at Iron Horse, their prices are really pretty reasonable. Uh, that's the only place I've actually found that, like One Eye Jacks has through the roof. Oh my and, god, and, it's outrageous! Yeah, uh, Iron Horse. We went there. And I bought everybody drinks, and it was actually a decent price. Like, just going out here to uh, Murphy's or Cole or something like that. Similar and it pricing. Was, yeah, it was similar. I was like, I can live with that. I don't yeah. feel like I'm going to regret this any worse tomorrow, so no. it's going to be all right. No. The worst is when you, like, take cash with you, and you're like, all right, I got 200 bucks in cash. And then you wake up the next morning, and it's all gone, and you're like, fuck. <laughs> what happened last night? It's even worse if you wake up and, like... <laughs> you're like your credit card's maxed out <laughs> oh my god you're like it's fine it's fine like when you're drinking you don't get it's like money doesn't matter you don't give a shit yeah that's how uh Just keep going to the atm taking cash out taking cash out taking until cash you can't out. anymore <laughs> yeah your limit your daily limit that's funny it, it yeah that's horrible but Sturgis rally i'm pretty i'm pretty damn excited for that oh i'm so excited i can't wait um iron horse has nine books or nine bands booked and counting, I can't say what they are yet, but my, we haven't announced. I've I've never made it down to see my favorite, like, well, the only band that comes to Sturgis that I would see. Uh, I've never made it down to see them, and it was Nonpoint. Oh. And, it, like, me and my cousin, it's like our favorites, and we were getting drinks at Iron Horse, and we heard it, but we thought it was like the PA, because it sounded so good. And I was like, oh, cool, man, they're playing Nonpoint. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then oh we got our drinks, God. and we walked, turned around, and then they were playing. And we were like, oh, my God. And then they stopped, and we just missed it. I was oh, so mad. That's the worst. Yeah. But yeah, I don't really, I don't know. I don't really. Ooh. You know, in this moment, we've had the last four years, and their show, they were packed every yeah. time they play. I think Maria Brink is a whiner. She puts on a <laughs> hell of a show, though. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of dudes are like, they're tough. It's like, come on, man. They're not tough. They're yeah. extremely theatrical and extremely dark. Who did they just have that was extremely theatrical there? It was... We had Star Set a couple years ago. Oh, uh, no. It was recent. Oh, man. They put on a heck of a show. I forgot who it was. At Iron Horse? Yeah. <laughs> was I there? Yes, I was. <laughs> um <laughs> they it, they just all blend together like it, I've yeah, seen, I I've seen last year we were responsible for I was responsible for 60 bands <laughs> like I there's a team of us that Tough take girl. it's not yeah. me myself yeah, but right. there's a team of us that do it but um they all kind of blend together and I'll be like oh yeah we did have them yeah yeah, yeah there's there's bands that I even forget I see on the itinerary yeah because it's like you just keep reading them and then you're like, ooh, and then you just lose it. And you know, what day it is? I oh mean, my god! Do you know so, Sunday through Saturday, and you got bands. I'm okay, like, and wow. now it's so now the rally, oh, the rally this year <laughs> is, um, it goes like the seventh through like the fifteenth or something stupid. Mm -hmm. It's like because it they go weekend to weekend, and if the first weekend falls in July, they have to bump it out. Yeah. So. It's it's late this year, and and I know a lot of businesses are worried that that's going to affect numbers because. A lot of people plan vacation for right before their kids starting school. Yep. And so I'm like, it. people will figure it out. Absolutely. Like motorcyclists around here. They, well, and or, all over. Like they just, a lot of them, I don't know. 
Like everybody says they're doctors, they're lawyers. Some of them are. A lot of them are regular people mm-hmm. that aren't loaded but will sacrifice to come to Sturgis Valley because that's their oh, that's will. their vacation time. Well, and what's so cool is, you know, this is this will be like my ninth year, not consecutively, but maybe tenth, ninth or tenth year working Sturgis. Yeah. And something that I found about bikers is they look so scary or dirty or like rough and tumble and they are some of the nicest people in the entire world yeah they really are yeah yeah I, like the biker community like i grew up nothing like it i grew up in the biker community actually i plan on starting like a motorcycle podcast also really yeah, do you know i have my motorcycle house. license do you yeah did you go to um uh the course yeah i did it through course. harley Good. Yeah. Good. That's and actually, awesome. I was just talking uh, to a friend. I was like, I think I'm going to do it again. I just to freshen up. Just to freshen up. You know, I just think that, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's better. Motorcyclists around here, we don't get all year to ride. Mm-mm. But uh, people who come here have no idea how difficult it is. And they actually do have a map that shows you by color. Uh, the most difficult roads that you should be taking it easy on mm. and then the advanced ones like and the intermediate and... roads. Yeah. And there's people that come here and think they can just go everywhere and see everything and well, ride, and... but you can't even, they can't even handle their own Harley. It's especially people that have like that wider back tire and then like the rain grooves on the interstate yeah, and then your turn. ass end, like those don't turn wiggles. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, Oh man, I didn't, it's so hard to drive on the interstate. Well, cause the grading have... in the road too yes. will throw you off if you don't know what you're doing. It's, mm-hmm. I had, uh, those are the people that trailer their bikes out. I would do. Honestly, I would not want to sit on a bike and drive 800 miles home on a motorcycle after partying here for a whole week. To I'd be, be like, completely Ooh. honest, I think that, excuse me, it's a uh, <clears throat> burp it out. Oh, Yanni. Um, it's, uh, it's dangerous. I think to be on a bike during Sturgis because, uh, like we won't even take the motorcycle out during Sturgis. There's a lot of uh, drivers who are assholes in cars. Well, and inexperienced motorcyclists. Them too, but there's a lot of assholes that are in cars around here that are locals uh-huh. that uh, that don't care. They're like, get oh your ass God. out of the way. And it's like, you, I know, have... you live in the Black Hills. This is like motorcycle capital. This is the area yeah. to ride. And if you don't like it, park your car and walk your little ass. Mm-hmm. It's, it, this is motorcycle haven. You know, I have always said that some of the absolute worst drivers in all of America are right here in Rapid City. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if you think I'm talking about you, I am. Yeah, well, they probably are. They're like, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> or, the, or, or everybody's like, oh, man, there really are some of the worst drivers here. No, I'm talking about you. <laughs> like, no. I love it. You're a terrible driver. Yeah, there is a lot of horrible drivers. I love watching people park. Oh even my God. even like just a normal parking space. It's did they get next to the line? So I work downtown. Yeah, you should see some of the dipshits that park downtown. <laughs> I am like, okay. Also, I know that you don't really want to walk that far, but you probably shouldn't be parking your big ass dually. You know, like yeah. And or then 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 they're like up on the sidewalk, which like now they can't really do because they have like the new meters. And oh I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they were actually supposed to, because um, their ass hangs out so far. Uh, but I mean, do you really like do you not own another vehicle? A lot of them ranchers do own multiple vehicles, and they're just like, oh, I'm gonna need my or truck. park on a side street. Why are you parking on St. Joe and Main? Like, yeah, that's you're just gonna cause a wreck. I'm just being an asshole, but you I can know what be. sucks too. People in cars really get mad is when they're going to park and then you see two cars in an open space and then you turn and there's a motorcycle park oh. right there. People like, get so mad, or like a little Prius or something, <laughs> yeah. just like tucked way up. And I'm like, God, I love it when it's a motorcycle and they're okay. like, you shouldn't be taking that whole parking the space. The only thing that pisses me off is when you see a motor, two motorcycles mm-hmm. taking up two spaces. Mm. I'm like, come on. Yeah, those are inexperienced guys that just want to be little assholes or something. Like, I mean, you share. Back and forth, man. Well, it's because they can't, right they can't, well, in a lot of times, like, they have a hell of a time backing out of a parking space, and so I then always, they got to, like... I always back up. Like, back in? You don't want to, like, push, like, because they're usually facing down a little hill. Yep. And, I mean, I it, that's the worst, yeah. especially with a heavy bike. I know, it's crazy. It, it's, yeah, I don't know. Motorcyclists. There's a lot more women riding nowadays. Like... Yeah. I used to... When I was riding, 
uh, before I went blind, like four or five years ago, I used to ride with nothing but girls. There was like three girls. They used mm-hmm. to call me all the time. Hey, we're going out in the hills. We're going to go, uh, you know, we're going to go through the hills and go like, uh, I don't know. Sugar that? Shack or yeah, whatever. That, that yeah. place. We got lost so many times, times trying to find that. But yeah, we used to go there all the time. And I, they were the only ones who used to ride all the time. All I've the guys lived here like, 20 years and I still am like, which way do I go to get there? Yep. I get lost. So I get dumb. lost in the hills still. I get lost on my way to Pactola. Okay. That you only have to know which end of town to go out of to get to Pactola. It'll take you right there. Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, it depends on what part you go left or you go right. And then you go, like, which dock. You know. There are signs, you know. I don't read. Oh, okay. I don't drive either, but <laughs> you like back when I used yeah. to. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I uh, I got my motorcycle license to kind of follow that whole, like, I hit this point in my life where I was like, Women can do anything, you know? And mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to start this dance group and I'm going to get my motorcycle license and fuck everybody. Like, not, I'm not going, that's not what I meant. That came out really bad. <laughs> but oh my God. No, I just meant like piss off people is more yeah, what I meant. I right. was like, oh God, after I said that, that sounded terrible. <laughs> um, and that's kind of why I got my license. And then I, truth, I don't even, I don't even have a bike. I've looked at several and I'm like, uh, I hate to even just buy one because I never have time to ride. It's it's nice, man. It's honestly nice. I know. I, I got two. I just need like a shitty little one, like a yeah. 750. I don't need anything crazy. Actually, those are really fast, like plenty power. Right. And yeah. I, I got a I got a chopper. That's a 750. It's a it's a CB750, but it's like I'm gonna start building it. This thing is insane. It's got variable timing and all that and just ah it's it's nuts and uh like i see everybody around here in the black hills on a harley mm-hmm. on the same harley and every time me and my buddies are riding i used to have Road a glides. different chopper it's the same thing and i'm like i know exactly how it is to ride one of those because i used to ride a harley but it is like in order to be cool and fit in with everybody around here, you have to have a Harley. You're, well, everyone will tell you you're not a real rider if you're you don't not have a, a Harley. Motorcycle. Yeah, it's like. Well, whatever. Yeah. I was looking There's, at a. I was looking at a little bobber. Those are. That's what I. Yeah, I love it, man. I was like, those Bobbers. are so. Yeah, but so uncomfortable. I bet because I'm sure that they're not. You know, oh, the I seats. Love them. I'd rather be uncomfortable and looking cool rather than looking like a D bag sitting straight up on a Harley. <laughs> I would uh, okay, and then so sorry, for, Harley guys. For somebody that um, has done hair for fifteen years and professional dance and aerial and gymnastics and all that crap, yeah, I would rather look like a douchebag and sit straight up because my <laughs> like I can't even go to like a bar and sit on a backless stool for very long anymore. Yeah, like I'm like, oh my god, my back is killing me. And I'll be like, I'll like have to get up and be like, I, you know, I don't have to go to the bathroom, but I'll walk to the bathroom. Suspension is nice, but oh. a, but a rigid, a hardtail, yeah, that's gonna. You better know every crack in these roads because you will. You're gonna have a bruised ass. Oh man, you're gonna slingshot a spinal like thing. I already am in the chiropractor weekly. Oof, rough. I have to. I bet you that dancing's hard. How many dancers you got right now? There's six of us. Okay, yep. and how many more are you looking for? I'm looking for. I would like three more because, you know, there'll be gigs that come up that like we've had to turn down because you didn't have all the girls. Yeah. All my girls have real jobs. You know what I mean? Like the dance group is like their hobby job. It's not their bread and butter. And if they've already got shit going on with work or already have prior commitments, they're like, Hey, sorry, I can't do that. Can you book enough to keep them busy? Like through the summer season? Um, you know, I could, but It's hard for you being a business owner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And it's hard for them being gone a lot. And like a lot of them have families and kids and jobs and and whatever. I know it's nuts. It's like, I mean, I would love to be on the road full time. That would be a tough job though, to dance. Like like if you went on tour, like some bands do, you know, like every Mm -hmm. two days you have to perform again for Mm -hmm. like months straight. That'd be tough. I would love it. I would live for that. That'd like, be it, awesome, man. But That's... like you look at those bands that tour, you know, 300 days a year and they're jumping around on stage and putting on a show every night. And can, it's like. You can tell when they're out of energy though. And then they're just playing and they're like, and they're drained. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's where that cocaine substance comes into. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. Uh, I was actually thinking about having a t-shirt made 
when I work production that says, no, I do not have cocaine. Don't ask. Oh, that'd be funny, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually got that idea from my buddy, Randy. Also a shirt that says, yes, I'm from here. Because people, are, everyone's <laughs> are like, you from South Dakota? Yeah. They're like, so where are you from? And I'm like, here. And they're yeah. like, like right here in Sturgis. And I'm like, well, like 17 miles from here I live. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny too, because they don't understand that when, when rally clears out, there is nothing open oh, in up Sturgis. There. Yeah. Yeah. It's a ghost town. Totally. Yep. It's, it's completely nuts. different. Like going there to, man, those or like bars. like going to Terry Peak. Those bars are crazy huge. Oh. And in order to be open, like that is insane. That is so much wasted space during the whole year. But they make enough in those 10 days. Oh, yeah. Which is insane. It if is. you think about the amount of money that comes through there. That's why beer is like 10 bucks. Well, yeah, one eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only places that are open are like the Knuckle and the Loud. Yeah. The and loud. like the Oasis. Oh, yeah. I but, like I like the loud. Oh, I love the loud. I like going to uh, Oasis for karaoke during Sturgis when they have that. I have I don't leave Iron Horse property. You got it for sixteen days. I can't. Oh, I have way too much going on and too much responsibility. And you then you gotta it's like, take a day, even if you're an employee. I used to DJ. No, we can't. I used to, I used to DJ at uh, Full Throttle. Yeah, and that was a pain in the butt. Just staying in a booth the whole time playing music and then yep. everybody just gets hammered and drink this and here's money and mm -hmm. play this song and i'm like i already have a list yeah but it's like you're like but for the right price i'll bump it to the top yeah but but it's still i was just like you know 20 bucks is 20 bucks bro one time at throttle i watched a girl shoot a dart out of her cooter and pop a balloon it's like the shit you see in Sturgis. <laughs> Sorry. The coffee bought went all over. <laughs> yeah, there's like, you see some weird shit in Sturgis. <laughs> and that is like one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Ugh, yuck. And I, she was like practicing in a corner for a while. And I was I'm like. I'm not into that. Like, I think Gross. like, to be completely honest, there had to have been like a button. Like it had to be like a dart <laughs> machine. Because like, <laughs> like. I know I keep talking about how women are powerful creatures, but we are not that powerful to shoot a fucking dart and pop a balloon. Like, be real. Now we're going to get somebody who's like, uh, I'll prove you wrong. <laughs> not oh here on the God. podcast. Not here. <laughs> Just video it. That would be viral. Oh. For yeah. all the wrong reasons. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> like, two girls, one cup. <laughs> two girls, one dart. <laughs> 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 Yuck. But she'd have to pop somebody's implant. Mm. That's how it'd be two girls, one dart. Uh, you can lose an eye. Uh, shoot your eye out. Shoot your boob out. Shoot your eye out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Everyone's going to be like, what is wrong with this chick? <laughs> no. No, that's a cool, lot. man. You got a lot going on. All the uh, time, yeah. That's, yeah, you are pretty inspirational for like not taking a step back from all that you got going on. That's awesome. Like a lot of women actually, and a lot of men should step up and just do what they want to do. And it is scary though, especially owning your own salon downtown. Yeah. That's like, you got to keep clientele, keep, you know, customers We've been happy. in that location almost five years. Yeah. It's doing really well. Um, really well, actually. I'm super happy with it. Um, and you know, it's like, it's funny because I've heard a few people be like, man, that's just so cool. You do this and this and this. And I'm like, I guess I never look at it like that. Yeah. I look at it like I do it because I want to do it and I like everything that I do. If something stops serving me, then I'm out. Yeah. And there's, like, you know, I just, I do it because I want to and I think it's cool. And there's, like, a, there's a lot of people that want to do things that they want to do, but they don't know how to jumpstart or or execute that to start doing what that they goes do. back to it's all in who you know it, it and, is and i tell i tell all of my stylists and my dancers you know 90 okay 90 is a little exaggerated <laughs> but like 60 percent of succeeding in business is mm -hmm. having good business relationships yeah. the minute you start burning those bridges you're digging your own grave professionally yeah and so you have to be so so careful and and i feel like i've instilled that in in people that work with me or for me. And if, if here's the thing, if I'm successful, they're successful and vice versa. And so we always try to build each other up. That's how it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, I don't like, there are days that I'll be like, man, why am I doing all this? And then I'm like, 
because I would be bored out of my mind if I didn't. Like, I have to do this stuff. Man. It's like yeah. for my mental health. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why, I, like, I had a rant. One of the first podcasts I did here by myself is just rant. It's on there. You guys can check it out. Um, It's basically about, like, not fulfilling, like, your... I don't know, whatever it is inside that you really like want to do. your goals or your ambitions. Yeah, or like if you're just losing sleep and it's really driving you insane, you just have to drop everything. Like, I mean, if you hate your job and you're going to your job and you cry in your car before you go in. You leave that fucking job. That, like, it is not, like, and people will be like, well, I can't. It's mental health and it's damaging to yourself on Absolutely. top of that. And I mean, some people. So many people stay because they don't think they can make money doing anything else. And I'm like, yeah, you have bills. You may have a family, you have things, but you know what? There's, your mental health and your well-being, like you, some people do commit suicide off of these things and it's better to leave and find something. I mean, oh, it is sure. hard, but. There was this quote that I saw a while ago um, and it was like, you only have one life to live. Like, why are you not running towards your dreams? Like you're on fire. Yeah. That's you know awesome. what I mean? I like, like that. And so, and, and, and I, I think about that quote a lot actually. And, um. And that's like, I will get, I will get to where I'm feeling like I'm at a standstill mm -hmm. and I'll just kind of get like really depressed. Yeah. Like everything I'm doing is, isn't doing that well, or it's, you know, I've, I've, it's going to fail soon and it's not, I'm just getting in my own head, you know? And then I'll see something like that quote and I'm like, fuck yeah. What am I doing? Get off, get off your ass, Megan. So then like this last Monday I emailed over 30 <laughs> venues in nine states I'm actually working with a couple. Yeah. Yeah. So hoping to have some really great booking announcements coming soon. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I know. And a lot of people will be like, we guys don't really do a lot of shows. And I'm like, well, cause we all have real jobs. Yeah. But, you know, and we've done, you know, we've, we have done shows. It's better to juggle the things that you want to do rather than just not doing anything that you really want. Well, and so, I have a really hard good. time focusing on one avenue. But that's fine. I'd yeah. be so bored if it was like the, my only focus was the salon. Yeah. I love it, but I'd be bored. You get burned out. Yes. Yeah. And I try and talk to a lot of people who, who are into hair. Don't burn yourself out by doing the same thing or, I mean, yeah, it is creative and it is hard finding that client sometimes that wants to do something new. But mm -hmm. I mean, you, but don't putting it out there. Don't work. 12 to 15 hour days, five days a week. Like some people are so in love with money that that's what starts. Damaging well, th them. And that's how you hit a hundred thousand dollar year as a hairstylist. It's very possible. Yeah. But, um, working part time 10 years ago, I was still pulling in 50 grand. Yeah. And it's like, you can do it. But I then started to go full time and just got so burnt out. Yep. And it's like, you can't, you can't stand behind that chair all day long. Oh, Insane. My back, my knees, my shoulders. Like I sound so old, but I'm like, I'm like the oldest 33 year old I know. <laughs> 33. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm 80 <clears throat> years of beating everything, you know, beating my body up and yeah, I can't, I can't stand behind the chair. I work four days a week at the salon. That's good enough. Yep. I mean, I have, I need booked good enough. I need the other three days a week to focus on everything else. Yeah. And you got dancing and then you also got... What else? Um, That's it. I have the salon, the dance group. I production manage at Iron Horse. I occasionally do radio. And I have the clothing company. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, when yeah. you start getting stuff with the clothing, bring it on down. Let's check it out. I should. Yeah, right yeah. now I mainly just have stuff for for chicks, but I could expand. <laughs> I could expand, you know? Hey, man, I'll wear it. No, I'm, I'm like, kidding. I'm always looking for like, leather and studs and leopard print and yeah. like graphic tank tops and like just shit that like i mean you can probably get online but not in those clothing groups and not yeah, it's, for the price and not it's hard to find that stuff locally oh yeah everything's shutting down yes like everything in the mall business some some local businesses i was saying that that uh businesses here aren't as thriving mm -hmm. and and then a couple guys tried to shut me down by saying business here, local business here is thriving big time. Well, they may be starting up. For necessities. But nobody's really like, 
I mean, we're we're all small business, mm-hmm. and that's where we're at. That's like our level. I don't yep. know about thriving. I mean, nobody's going international, and that's thriving. Like, there's we're, we're one company. There's one company that I can think of in town that started local and is doing, and it's that top notch nutrition. Oh, like they're starting to do really big, great things. But um, yeah, as far as I mean, we're all local we're small yep. sioux falls is five to ten years ahead of us because they've got businesses that are shipping all over the country they do yep. yeah yeah sioux falls is a different story big time and and they started as like small mom and pop shops like mm-hmm. little clothing stores and now they're shipping all over and they're and they're taking like i think the trick these days is getting involved with that like after pay or like uh, one of those where you can pay in installments interest free or whatever like like a layaway kind of but like you <laughs> it, it it works kind of like a credit card like you're either oh. approved or you're not you know and and like you can order so that's how like people are ordering four or five hundred dollars worth of shit well then it's only like installments yeah it's like four installments or something because i looked into it for um some stuff with our clothing company mm-hmm. about getting it but um that's because people be like well i don't we live in an era of most people don't have the money right now uh oh. Yeah. Most people are living on credit. A lot of people are actually living on credit. Yeah. So and and they want to be able to enjoy extra things. And so a lot of clothing companies, um, shit, even um, plastic surgeons are doing stuff like that. Oh yeah, you can go get that card and make installments to get your boobies done. Care credit, which is a, which is a good good idea. It, I mean, well, that's how they're making you know they're making yeah. a shit ton of money. I think that's a good idea. The red they're trying to save up because I mean like. You know, it's like you have to save up. Like everyone has like emergencies and shit that you know, and it's like cost of living versus what people make is so out of whack. Yeah, it's yeah. dumb. Yeah. But nothing, nothing that I do, I never look at it like, oh my god, I'm gonna make so much money. Like <laughs> I never look at it like that. I look you at it. You shouldn't actually. You no. shouldn't go in greedy and be like, I'm. I want to make all this money. Mm-hmm. It's just it's about doing what you want to do. Yeah, that's and exactly that's, it. Yeah, that's what I try and I try and just promote that people should be happy and then it'll come along it just so happens that things that i like are making me money like it it's great um there's so many things these days that people like when make money video games yeah yep just streaming i did a voiceover once for a video game for a company out of minneapolis dude that would be so awesome yeah i don't remember what my character's name was it was a couple of years ago um with the Big John's game out of uh, Minneapolis, <laughs> they hired me to play a character in a video game. That's awesome. That would yeah. be so cool. I totally forgot about that. Oh man, I've done I've done some cool shit. I should write a book. <laughs> like, Probably done some cool shit. Seen some weird shit. Yeah, like, you could do an audible book. There you go. Oh my god, yeah. I put people to sleep. Audible books are awesome. For uh, that's yeah. all I'd, like I do. Yeah. I know, but I'd have to write it first. I need like a ghostwriter. I go to sleep if I read a book. So thank God for Audible. Yeah. Well, and it's like, I, I, I think that I would definitely have to have a ghostwriter because I'm like ADD. Yeah. And then like, I'll notice even when I'm talking to my friends about stuff, I'll start on one topic and then, and then I'll be like, oh, by the way, and then I'll jump to the other topic. And then, you know, I'm, I'm what you call a topic hopper. That's probably how this conversation is going. Oh, completely. <laughs> because I can't, I can't focus. I'm like, then what? Then what? Then what? I'm pretty bad at keeping people on track anyway. But sorry for sorry if I'm confusing anybody out there <laughs> right. with my topic hopping. Well, we will have you on again, Meg. Absolutely, Eva Steele. That's me. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was for, great. Uh, a women in the Black Hills or Women Wednesday. I don't really don't know what I'm going to call it, but uh, we're going to figure it out. And uh, make a play on WCW, <laughs> like Women Crush Wednesday, but Women Crushing Wednesdays. That'd be sweet. There you go. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, if you got any uh, influential ladies that you know of that have something going on, uh, I do actually. Let me know and Perfect. we'll talk. Uh, for any women out there, uh, Wednesdays are for you guys. So just uh, email us at blackhillspodcast at gmail.com or uh you know if you follow us on instagram facebook dm us and uh listen to us on uh itunes spotify amazon alexa google play wherever all of the above yeah you got any like any websites you want people to check out some stuff 
Uh, check out the dance group on Instagram, Dirty Sexy Riot Official. And then the salon does have a website. It's planethairrc.com. It has all of our uh, services listed yeah. with prices and all that good stuff. So cool. Work with a lot of great teams. Check them out. What about the uh, clothing on? Nothing there yet? Oh, yeah. No, that's that's just on Facebook. That's a uh, Closet Lush Apparel on Facebook. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. We'll probably have you back again, man. Sounds good. We got. I'm sure we have more to talk about. We do. I just actually like <laughs> thought of three topics, but we'll continue that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, to be everybody. Continued. Thanks so much. <laughs> Bye.